In this video, we're going to talk about colorectal cancer. This is an overview and introduction. Uh, colorectal cancer is the second most commonly diagnosed cancer and is the commonest gastrointestinal malignancy. The prevalence of colorectal cancer is increasing in, in the younger population, and this could be attributed to diet. This is also the same with diverticular disease. Family history is strong in colorectal cancer. The risk factors for developing colorectal cancer include age, male sex, smoking, family history, as we just discussed, diet high in red meat and poor in fiber, polyposis syndrome, or FAP, FAP, and HNPCC, or Lynch disease. Other risk factors also include history of polyps, certain types of polyps, that is. Uh, personal history of colon cancer, and also having inflammatory conditions of the bowel, including ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. The signs and symptoms or clinical presentation differ depending on where the cancer or growth occurs within the bowel. Of course, this is just a summary. People vary in their clinical presentation. So here I'm drawing a colon, ascending, transverse, descending, sigmoid, and the rectum. Cancerous tumors that occur on the right side account for 20% of cases of colon cancer. People are often asymptomatic, present with weight loss and um, iron deficiency. People also pre present with a palpable mass. On the, on the lower right quadrant of the abdomen. And this is, this is because they are often asymptomatic, and so the tumor can grow without notice until signs of weight loss and anemia occurs. Tumors occurring in the descending sigmoid area account for the majority of colon cancer, 75% of cases. Patients can complain of dark red blood mixed in with stools, plus minus clots. There can be increased bowel frequency, abdominal pain, and bloating, flatulence, and mucus present. Tumors occurring in the rectal regions can present with deep red blood on the surface of the stool. People can also have abdominal pain, plus minus tenesmus. You can imagine a growth in the rectum would cause sensation of incomplete um, evacuation. The colon is an amazing organ. The general macroscopic differences between normal and cancerous. The colon have tinea coli, which are separate longitudinal ribbons of smooth muscles on the outside of the ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid colons. The tinea coli contract lengthwise to produce the hostra, the bulges in the actual colon. The colon is supplied by arteries that branch from the inferior mesenteric artery. The inferior mesenteric artery further branches into smaller arteries, which anastomose with, with each other. These have importance when part of the colon are, is, is being resected, because we want to maintain blood flow to the remainder of the colon. When colon cancer occurs, the tumors can obstruct the lumen. The chemical produced by the cancers can cause um, angiogenesis, formation of new blood vessels, which contribute to the bleeding found in colon cancer. So patients often present with rectal bleeding. Pathology. Colon cancer can come in a few pathological forms. Polyploid, ulcerative, stenosing, and infiltrative. At the end of the day, these different pathological types can and will eventually lead to some form of obstruction. Investigations. The investigations performed for patients suspected of colon cancer or any form of mass includes an abdominal examination followed by a per rectal examination. And this is done with a proctoscopy to check for any obvious masses and source of bleeding, such as from internal hemorrhoids. 
Colonoscopy is then considered, which is under general anesthesia, and involves the doctor inserting a colonoscope through the back passage and visualizing the colon. Polyps can be taken out and sampled to check for malignancy. Barium NMR colonography can also be performed. Finally, you have blood investigations, which include LFT, FBC, and the tumor marker for colon cancer, CEA. Once and if the cancer is diagnosed, it is important to stage the cancer. Staging investigations used include biopsies, CT scans, and PET scans. For staging itself, there are two forms of staging. The first is the TNM staging, which looks at T, the primary tumor, N, the lymph node, and M, metastasis. The second form of staging is Duke staging, which looks at the five-year survival, and there are a total of four stages plus stage zero. Stage zero is nothing really and benign. The remainder of the stages, it depends on how deep the tumor is going, so what layers it's going into and if it, and if it has metastasized. So stage zero, there's a 90% five-year survival. Stage two, the tumor is growing even deeper, 70% five-year survival. Stage three, about 30%. Stage four, it's less than 10% five-year survival with metastasis. Management of colon cancer. Colon cancer is potentially curative with surgical resection of the colon, colectomy, with also surgical resection of the lymph nodes, lymphadenectomy. Surgical resection of the colon, colectomy, is performed um, depending on where the tumor is located on the colon. And when surgically removing parts of the colon, it is important to take into consideration the blood supply of that part of the colon, as well as the lymph drainage of that part. Tumors that occur on the right side of the, uh, of the uh, large intestine or, the, or in the right transverse area requires a right hemicolectomy extended. Tumors occurring on the left side require left hemicolectomy. Tumors occurring in the sigmoid and upper rectum require a high anterior section. Tumors in the rectum require APER, um, ab um, abdominal per perineal resection. Also, during this procedure, some patients may, may require having a temporary or even a permanent colostomy bag pouches, which, while others um, get the colon joined uh, to the other parts, to the remaining parts of the colon eventually. Of course, together with colectomy, there is adjuvant chemotherapy with or without radiotherapy. Chemotherapy usually involves a 5 fluorouracil If the cancer has metastasized, that organ can be potentially removed. And finally, there is also palliative care. 